Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Let's Summon Demons. This was sent to you by Cryptozoic Entertainment, and the designer, I do not know. Okay, I found it in the credits of the manual. This was designed by Ben Stoll, who is also the designer for Don't Talk to Strangers, uh, which I did not know, but that review and this review, both games, and Let's Dig for Treasure, all designed by Ben Stoll. Can you summon the most fun and powerful demons? What are little Johnny, Susie, and Fido supposed to do when the suburban droll has, has them down? Let's summon demons! Whether you're building sadistic synergies with the rotten kids, or sharing the love with the sweet kids, only the savviest and luckiest player, the best demon summoner, will walk away a winner. Get immersed into the hilariously dark retro world of Stephen Rhodes. Let me show you how to play. In this game, you are trying to summon demons. If you summon three total demons and maintain a stash of at least 10 souls to become the ultimate demon summoning kid on the block, you win the game. So at the beginning, uh, each of you gets three demon cards that you hide in your hands. These are the demons you're trying to summon. You also start with a candle. Uh, they are all different. This is an evil candle. Uh, you click the soul when uh, a 9, 10, or 11 is rolled. So, there are three things you can do on your turn in uh, any order. You must roll the dice. So, okay, I roll the 7. Whenever you roll the dice, every card that any player has gained with a number matching that roll activates. In this case, I only have the evil candle, so nothing happens. Um, but if I, let's say, I roll the 9, then I would get... A soul. Unfortunately, uh, the copy of the game that was sent to me doesn't have the soul tokens in it, so I had to use uh, tokens from a different game. So just imagine that there's some kind of currency bit that you get, because you use the souls to buy other cards. Aside from rolling the dice, you can also choose to buy a card from the block. Uh, each player starts with five souls, um, so if you want to buy one, uh, it costs three souls to buy one from the block. So I look here and go, okay, mm, I'm gonna buy Adam. So I'll buy Adam, it costs three souls, and it activates anytime an eight is rolled and I collect the soul. So now I have two cards in front of me. Another action you can do is summon a demon. If you have three, so let's say I had these three children here. I can discard any three of my boys, girls, or animals to summon a demon. Maybe something like Dice Zazu. Uh, each time you roll doubles, collect a number of souls equal to one of those die faces. Uh, so, and that means it's a, a continuous effect. So, once I have that demon in front of me, I have that power for the rest of the game. Whenever cards are bought from the block, they are replaced. Uh, and also one other thing, if your demon has an ability, like let's say this one, Krampus, uh, gain the top two cards in the block deck. It's only when you roll a four, not when anybody rolls a four. Demons are the only exception. But otherwise, yeah, once you have three demons in play, like here's uh, Oni Twi, your boys and rolls collect double souls on your turns. That's another passive ability. Once you have three demons in front of you and uh, 10 souls, you win the game. So that's pretty much it in terms of uh, gameplay. You're just rolling dice, collecting souls, passing or buying cards and passing the dice. So let's go through some of the uh, cards you could possibly buy. Here's Sweet Pippi. Uh, for each of your animals, collect one soul when a four is rolled. This tells you down here, whether they're boys, girls, or animals. Eve is very straightforward. Collect the soul um, when you roll a six. Sweet Destiny, uh, activate one of your other sweet boys or sweet girls. As you'll notice, some of them have sweet or rotten by their names, meaning they that shows you what you do with that. Rotten Tommy, um, discard the top card of the block deck. If it's a girl, gain it, and you roll him. Uh, Rotten Sam, you may discard one of your animals. If you do, collect six souls. So they all have different effects like that, depending on when you roll them. Uh, I'll show you a couple of the other demons. I'm not gonna show you all of them, because there's a lot, and also, it's kinda nice to have some surprises in there. Dolagorgon, all of your boys and girls count as both boys and girls. Asmodeus, each time you gain an animal, collect a soul. And we are Legion, for each of your cards, collect one soul, including this card. And that's when you roll a uh, six. Otherwise, that's it. Uh, buy cards, roll dice, collect souls, and try to summon three demons and have ten souls, and that's the game.
So just like uh, Don't Talk to Strangers and Let's Dig for Treasure, this is another game, you know, with Stephen Rhodes illustrations, which again, look great. And this game in particular is in the vein of something like Machikoro or Space Base, where, you know, you roll your dice and activate cards with what you roll. I like the vibe, tongue in cheek, very silly. At its core, you know, that gameplay loop of rolling dice and hoping your cards activate will always be decently fun no matter what. What this game does differently is that with the three demon cards that you need to summon to win, you have to remove kids that you previously played to do so. I actually think this is kind of a mistake. What's fun about dice activation games is the more you build up, the more activations and building up you get as the game goes on. But instead in this game, having to take away your progress each time for these demons, even though the demons give you perks and stuff, it, feel, it still feels like, why am I losing this momentum? You know that if it, it doesn't feel good it's just like, oh I, i'm like if i build three kids get rid of them get a demon i'm almost back to where i started uh which is kind of frustrating and sure you can wait to summon them like, i'll do it later but eventually you're gonna have to sacrifice three kids and it just feels like you're losing progress every time. I also think this game needed to take a page from Machikoro 2's book, which I recently reviewed, especially because you're constantly losing those kids. The candles in the beginning provide only a couple numbers you can hit. And if you're unlucky, you will just get nothing because of bad rolls. Machikoro 2 has a mechanic where if you were bankrupt, you could get at least one coin. And I think this game needed something like that. Not exactly that, but something like that. That'll compensate you if you just will not get any money. Otherwise, if you're forced to give up a bunch of kids, and by doing so you're just chopping off a, a significant chunk of your engine that you've built, it could turn into just people constantly rolling dice, rolling dice, hoping to activate something, and nothing happens for like six turns. Uh, that's why forcing you to discard the cards feels like such a mistake. I feel like instead of discarding them, you should maybe, I don't know, earn a demon for every three kids you get, or uh, maybe you pay a number of souls if you have three kids for every three kids, but you should still keep the kids. Then you get that fulfilling progression and escalation instead of constantly, all right, I sacrifice the kids and I lose my progress. Okay, I'm gaining more kids. Oh, I sacrifice them again. It doesn't really work. Overall, though, it's still decently fun. Uh, and it captures that spirit of dice activation in a small package, so I didn't have a bad time with it. Uh, the demon powers are a lot of fun, actually. The abilities on the cards are pretty decent. I just wish I didn't have to keep losing them all the time because of the just that one rule.